Welcome back to the channel. Today I thought I'd remove the seats and the carpets from inside the car. Where we find this, this, a hole, and a bodge. These seats must be one of the easiest uh, in the car wheel to remove. Um, all you need to do is uh, undo those bolts which fit into bobbins inside the car take them off and then the seat just slips out. There you can see the bolts that hold the uh, seat rail in. And as I say, it's extremely easy to remove. On the top corners of both seats, there are little tears or when it's worn through, uh, as you can see there. Focus. Uh, which along with the cigarette burn, I believe can be fixed with some uh, vinyl welding, um, which I'll have to have a look into. Someone has recommended that actually, uh, so it's something I need to research. Uh, and on the top corner of the other one, again, if it will focus, is the same. But that's the only problem with the seats. As I say, they just both need a, a blooming good clean. Once the removal of the interior carpets, um, most of the carpets will just pull out uh, to reveal what's left behind. And in this case, it's some of the original carpets, as you can see there. Uh, but further up, just a little bit of felting material or backing uh, of the original carpets. Um, under here, under the seat, that is the original carpet. Um, when I first saw this, I thought that's a strange colour for um, the interior carpet, but I'm reliably informed it's uh, it's actually was originally black uh, and it's faded. And I suppose you can see it a little bit there. The carpet fit uh, against the um, uh, centre tunnel is stuck on to the felt you can see there um, and on the inside there it's fixed to cardboard. Uh, I, don't, I don't think that's original and as you can see it's covering up bolts which um, should be removed when taking the pedal box out. Onto the seat belts and these are the original seat belts fitted to the car back in 1968. Um, the belts attached to the um, centre tunnel is easily removed uh, but the other side is a bit more involved in that the original carpet as you can see there fitted to a backboard needs to come out before you can remove the, uh, the um, side part of the seat belt. So to take that off first of all we need to undo the the uh, cover for the soft top and then we need to undo those bolts that secure this uh, rail that holds on the uh, cover for the soft top and the carpet board. Okay, before I can move the backboard and the carpets, I need to remove the seat belts. Uh, and there's one there uh, which doesn't really need to be removed to get the backboard off. But the uh, bottom seat belt anchor is just in there, as you can see. And the second one is behind here. You can just about see it there. Not much room to get a, um, a socket or um, a spanner in there, but uh, we'll give it a go. Then we can just 
drag this through and then pull the backboard off. Well, that was a, a bit of a faff to get them bolts out. Uh, most of them are okay, but uh, there are a couple of awkward ones. That's the old carpet out and there's the backboard, which has been butchered a little bit. Um, so let's remove that. And there we have it. That's there, I'll zoom in, is the rear seat belt anchor. And that actually attaches to the chassis. It looks as though it screws in. Over this side, you can see the hole there through to the chassis. On the other side, you can see the seat belt anchor there. And that actually looks as though it's been glass fibred around uh, for some reason. Um, it's had a replacement spider chassis, so I can only assume someone's actually um, fiberglassed over that for some, as I say, for some reason. That uh, uh, seatbelt anchor there um, is very reluctant to come out. Um, I think it might be twisting in the uh, in its uh, uh, housing. Uh, so I'm going to have to have a look at that in a bit more detail. So I've managed to get the uh, Seat belt anchor off, and the reason I couldn't undo it because uh, the nut wasn't captive, um, as you as you can see here, it was just bolted through there. So uh, this is obviously a mashup for some reason. Uh, whether there's a little bit of damage or not, I don't, I don't know, uh, but it's totally different to the other size, so other side. Um, also, there's a big hole there, as you can see, uh, there's been some damage, so that will have to be repaired. And all we're relying on now is these two bars uh, as a seatbelt anchor. Um, I'm not sure I like that. Uh, I'll have a look to see um, how the other ones are bonded in and see if I can do something the same. Uh, but in the meantime, I'm going to take that off and have a closer look. There's the seat belt anchor that replaced the original, which for some reason uh, is missing. It's obviously been damaged somehow. Uh, there doesn't seem to be any deformation of the uh, reinforcing struts, um, but uh, for some reason it's just not there. What it should look like is this. As you can see, it's totally different. Uh, it's welded in place uh, to the struts, uh, which are a little bit rusty at the moment, but that can be taken care of. Um, I think I will have a go remanufacturing that. It looks fairly simple. Um, just a bit of fabrication to be done. So uh, I'll have a go at doing that. The hole there used to be a lot smaller than it, than it is now. Uh, it's where the seats support um, runners were bolted through, uh, but for some reason it's uh, enlarged quite a bit. Plus there's also a crack there which it appears someone's tried to um, repair, uh, but without much success. That crack actually goes straight the way through the body. Um, it doesn't seem to extend very far, so that's got to be repaired and I think I'll glass fibre the lot and uh, drill through a new hole. Um, I may even put some uh, a steel insert into the glass fibre to uh, reinforce it a little bit uh, because the same Oops. seems to be happening over that side. There's a very small crack there um, but I'm, I might even reinforce that a little bit. These need some sort of attention. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with that yet. I'll try and screw them out. Uh, but the one that's going to give me the most problem is that one there. So to have a better look at that, um, I'll be removing the uh, rear parcel shelf in which the, um, the hood irons are stowed. Um, that can be removed by just undoing all these uh, Tenax fasteners. 
Most of the carpets have been removed now. There's still a few bits and pieces to take out. Um, but I just thought I'd uh, show you the condition of um, the inside. And as I said a little bit earlier, the reinforcing bars look in pretty good condition. A little bit of surface rust here and there, but uh, as I say, not too bad. So I'll give those a clean up. Um, and if I need to um, put any more um, glass fibre to uh, reinforce it in some way, I shall do that. Uh, but just to clean up, de-rust, and it uh, should be good. And really the same for the passenger side. I've left the, uh, the underfelt or sand deadening, whatever you want to call it, um, in place at the moment. Uh, the carpets I've taken out and the boards I've taken out, I don't think they're original. Um, or if they are, they've been cut about a lot. Uh, I'll show you that in a second. One of the boards that goes along the side of the car that uh, the carpet is attached to. Uh, and as you see, there's a cut and it's been repaired there. Um, I can't see that being factory, uh, but I'll stand to be corrected. But I think this was original. There's some uh, scribble there which seems to match the style of uh, some other writing I've found in the car. So this is a bit of a longer video than uh, I first anticipated, um, but uh, as things went on, I started to take more apart and uh, uh, spot a few little problems. Um, so I'll do a part two to this and take the front carpets and sand deadening out and tell you what I'm going to do with it. So that'll be in the next episode. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. Uh, there'll be lots more to come.